No burnouts in the carports, guys. No <laughs> burnouts in the carports. I and we're going to put 300 drag and drive cars in a drive-in. You never know what those kids are watching. You may be inspiring the next generation when you drive your race car through. Sunset, and we're watching American Graffiti on Route 66. Well, welcome to episode 51 of the Drag Driver Pete Show, presented by Summit Racing. That's right, 51 episodes, dude. It's great. Yes. Tonight's a great show. We are really excited about what is going to happen tonight. We've got event updates, like uh, who sold out in less than a minute, uh, which events have upcoming registration, which events have open registration. We have people's preferences on diapers or belly pans, so we're going to give you kind of a rundown of that. And then we talked to the man himself, the, the Dragon Drive World Champion. We talked to Mr. Bryant Goldstone about what he has planned for his uh, – I don't know, backup championship run here. So we're going to talk, we're going to go over a little bit of that as well. We have Jared Holt of King of the Open Road, uh, who is also, you know, just an all around great dude. Guys, if you don't know, my name is Mike Narks. I'm the host of the Drag Driver Pete Show and the Drag Driver Pete News. I'm also an announcer with Heads Up Hustle. Uh, so I can add that to my resume for this year as well. So Dragon Drive Statistician, announcer uh, and promoter, because we're going to talk about the circuit stuff here in a little bit as well. Eric, tell them who you are and what you got going on, dude. Well, don't forget, when you're at events, you also are a photographer and videographer, too. So, <laughs> Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, I am Eric White. I am the co-host for both the show and the news on Saturday mornings. I help out with a lot of artwork here with Drag Drive Repeat, a lot of photo editing, and really whatever needs to be done, I'm here to help mm -hmm. get that done. Outside of that, I do run my own uh, YouTube channel and social media, which is 815 Swaps. Yep, dude, you're a busy guy, and I appreciate everything you've done. And guys, we appreciate everything you do, all the folks that are out there. Um, we have, you know, we, we've been calling you guys race car friends for well over two years, and it I think it fits because there's nothing cooler than seeing your friends when you're driving around and get every, it's just, it's so much fun. And so I saw some race car friends as I was driving around on the route for the circuit the other day. And guys, we couldn't do the circuit without sponsors. Summit Racing is part of the Drag Driver Pete brand and the circuit as well. Driven Racing Oil just came on board. Molly Motorsports in their second year coming on here. We appreciate those guys. Car Chains is a new one for 2024. Howard's Cams is back for 2024 for another year. Performa Built Transmissions is a new one for 2024. Do you hear this stuff, man? We're growing. We're growing. Sweet Patina is back. They were our first sponsor. We want to say thank you to them so much for making a, a lot of this possible. I mean, it really comes down to Blake and the team down there. And then Racing Junk Classifieds. Look, we don't run a buy, sell, trade page because it's too much brain damage. So we let Racing Junk Classifieds handle all of that. So we just want to say thank you to everybody that is a part of all of us growing. And Summit Racing, I don't know if you know this, but dude, they started. It, it's like Summit Racing, Speed Legacy began in 1968, almost 60 years ago. Yeah. One man operation. That Ooh. was how it started. It was crazy. Now it's the World Speed Shop, four huge facilities, warehouse and retail stores, 200 plus catalog editions. Can you imagine putting that together? Like you got to figure out what people want to look at in a catalog. Uh, you know, it's easy with the internet. Fueling your passion. They save you money, deliver fast, and offer top notch customer service. 10 years ago, they launched a Summit Racing mobile app easy access for parts. I mean, that's probably the best way I shop. And then you can find Summit Racing, obviously on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. You know, our buddy Justin over there does and does all the hard work on uh, on other social media videos and stuff. And then you can tune into the On All Cylinders podcast if you like this kind of stuff right here. Uh, but from wider genres of the car, uh, the automotive community, uh, they have all kinds of cool stuff on that podcast as well so from humble origins to the social media lane summit racing stands by your need for speed let's talk about event updates brought to you by our friends at driven racing oil open registration currently drop the hammer they have registration open if you want to get involved get the car out of the garage early early in the season for the folks that are in michigan this is a great one right here drop the hammer open right now find it on facebook we have Central Victorian Drag and Drive. We were talking to Dave Curtis earlier. This event, obviously, in Australia, so it's a little harder for us uh, Americans to get our stuff shipped over there. But I'm sure they would let somebody ride. But listen, they're wanting folks. And they're also running like a Saturday shootout deal. So they're letting folks jump in on Saturday as well. So that's kind of exciting for all of that that they've got going on. This is one of seven events 
in Australia for this year. And Which then is wild. Crazy. And then, dude, we're like a month from uh, the Hard S 1000 for the Hall S Garage. I yep. forgot to add that in here. It's it's wild, man. It's There's a lot happening in Australia. So it's like the U.S. and then Australia is second with seven. It's, it's, it's pretty intense. That is for sure. Now. Registration updates because we have some stuff that's coming. You know, Rocky Mountain Race Week, dude. Did you hear how fast it sold out? It was fast, like one minute. Yeah, one minute. Here's what's really cool about the Rocky Mountain Race Week setup. If you attended in 2023 for 1.0, this is for 1.0 registration. If you attended in 2023, you get a day early registration for 2024's event. What's even cooler about that is that. There were only 60 spots available to the public for the 2024 event. So if you start doing the math on that, <laughs> that means there's a lot of folks that are returning. So when everybody says it's like a family reunion going back to Rocky Mountain, that is, that's what it is. Yeah. Because, you know, they're entering their 10th running. This is the 10th year for that event to be held. This is going to be a great time. I'm telling you right now that if, if you are anywhere near... Tulsa, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, Ennis, Texas, Mocan Dragway, or uh, or back to Tulsa. You got to go to one of these days. It's going to be a blast. Let's talk oil containment. We're going to stay on the driven racing oils segment here for a second. We asked the other day in the Drag Driver Pete Race Car Friends Facebook group, who runs what? And we got 13 different replies. Right? There were like 30-something different comments on the post, but 13 different replies. Uh, an oil pan, definitely the choice for everyone in drag and drive, at least. I don't know about everybody else, but in drag and drive, no, nah. uh, definitely did it because it was 11 of the selections out of 13. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty intense. So I kind of went through and grabbed some, some comments from folks, Alex Corella, we know him in the red, uh, not notch back Fox body. He said he went with a belly pan. Couldn't see a way that a diaper would work without getting burned up because of the hot side on his car. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, he said when he was testing on two thirty fives last year, he had one on his, one of his oil drain bolts come loose and the belly pan caught it. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. So he said, did a pass with the oil, on the pan and it kept it off the track so makes sense nice the the diaper would have also caught a bolt but who knows if you'd have ever seen it right and then john dodson said he chooses a pan uh, he chose it to keep the oil temps down on the drives and then it's lined with pig mats as well and another comment in that post was that they then also put um what do you call that metal like expanded metal you know, it's kind of wavy and welded together. Uh, they said they put expanded metal on top of the pig mats to kind of keep it down on the bottom so it doesn't blow away. I don't know. Gotcha. So, we got then, a team hybrid uh, racing here, which is Jeremy. He says uh, pan there as well. So Yep. Yep. There was there was somebody else that was saying they were extending there. I think it was uh, Andrew he Heistand said that he was going to extend his pan up a little further, or maybe it was John Paul Franks. Uh, so he was going to extend the sides up more so it would uh, hold more volume of oil. So it makes sense. And then Rich Woodward of um, oh, Racecraft Garage says he chooses a diaper over a pan any day of the week. And then he kind of went in to explain why it was better and I mean, he's had some, he's put a rod through a pan, a rod through an oil pan, not yeah. through a belly pan, but a rod through an oil pan. So I feel like he, he's probably a guy that kind of knows that stuff as well. Yeah. So then we got uh, Dan Chandler here saying nice pick. <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, when you do a huge gnarly burnout, man, we, we, you know, it's sad that this was the end of that burnout, but listen, Dan did probably one of the best burnouts i've ever seen at the uh at the back to the streets no prep drag and drive that we went to earlier in 2023 it was man it was amazing got all of it on camera and then sadly yes this is what happened his uh something blocked the oil and the the uh, oil galley and the pressure built and blew the oil filter uh what do you call it gasket out and just covered everything so <laughs> luckily his engine wasn't damaged or anything like that so we, we should ask him is he putting on a belly pan or a diaper he actually made a comment in that post asking you know if that situation had happened which one would have protected it the most you know would, oh, would cool. a diaper have protected the oil filter if that had happened so because i mean it's such a freak accident that he that it that happened that 
that's really a hard thing because I don't even know, like a, definitely a pan wouldn't have helped with that because it would be, it was like spraying out the side of the block. He initially thought he had hurt the, hurt the engine pretty bad. So, yeah. And then we got a uh, hidden mortar sports here. Carl saying that he runs a diaper. So yeah, pretty well, good mix I, of both, you know, really would, in, the, in the overall um, kind of responses. It's, it's been fairly even with the, the belly pan slightly ahead. Yep, I would uh, wear a diaper if I rode in Klaus the Barbarian with him. That car is pretty intense, man. 1,800 horsepower, twin turbo LS and a cart. Man, yep. Yep, the, the Narx cart makes 300 horsepower, and it's a little bit dangerous every now and then. So I can only imagine what that thing is like. Oh, so, come on. That thing hasn't been outside of your garage in like three years don't give me it's that it's only been two and a half so <laughs> we uh I, I am definitely working on it a little bit here and there i actually put it on the lift the other day so we're getting closer i drove it from the house back here six months ago now i've got it on the lift and now we can start pulling the the transmission down okay we got a facebook user here saying i'd love to do a pan now uh since i did sick week with a diaper oil temps mm. So yep. that's that yep. seems to be the biggest theme with the engine diaper is the oil temps is what yep. what I'm seeing. Well, and I think that's kind of for a race car, it doesn't matter because you're you're trying to get it to temp and then make a pass. But right. for you know us driving a thousand miles, you know the guys with the with the belly pans, they can literally pull up and drop the pan or pull up, but they can get done making their pass, drop the pan in two or three minutes, depending on how you build it. But there's no way you could do that with a diaper. The, yeah. The so it would be really difficult to do that. So, and then we got Zachary Stevens here saying, I'd like to know what ETs people start using either oil containment methods. Yeah. I, I think it's like a, a new or a, an NHRA rule. You've got to have something at certain ETs, but I think we're now getting to the point where folks have kind of have some cars sorted and so now this is just that next upgrade, that that next thing you can work on so you can continue to keep working on your car and keep building it, you know? Yeah. And uh, Hidden Motorsports here again. Oil cooler and no oil temp sensor equals no care. There I mean, let's be honest. That car drifts and it does Aussie style burnouts like it. He probably doesn't even look, he doesn't care. I mean, that car is going to, it's going to work till it won't, you know? Yeah. That's the whole thing. Which is what's cool about uh you know the bmw there is they do a little bit of everything with that car they've done the drifting they've done drag and drive so all around fun vehicle there oh yeah for sure <laughs> yeah sadly dan chandler here says uh, unfortunately zachary even slow cars can oil down yes and again that's what happens and and dan's put thousands of miles on that truck tens of thousands of miles on that truck and never had an issue um, until he does the john force burnout of course so, <laughs> but again one of the coolest burnouts that's out there all right yeah let's let, let's keep going here because I, I know that uh we're gonna we're gonna end up on the oil pan or uh <laughs> belly pan and engine diaper conversation for for too long and we're, we're kind of on a schedule here so we got next up is the uh Summit Racing Dragon Drive World Champion updates. Guys, if you don't know, Bryant Goldstone won it last year. I was going to say dominated, but my brain said you can't say that because it, he, I mean, like he really had to work for it to get there. He didn't yeah. have it locked up at any time during the, during any of the events that he went to. But he's obviously done sick week, got that knocked out, has a perfect points event with sick week. Okay, so 39 points from there. He is signed up for sick summer. And as of yesterday, he has signed up for Hot Rod Drag Week 2024. That's right, early registration because he was the Dragon Drive World Champion. And the Hot Rod Magazine staff is amazing. So they gave us free entry. They gave him free entry, not me. They gave him free entry into Hot Rod Drag Week 2024 for winning that. So it's pretty awesome. And then Rocky Mountain Race Week. I know that Bryant and Matt have been talking I have I don't necessarily have the 100% say I can I, that I can 100% say he's going to 1.0 but I know they've been talking and I hope he does. I hope he attends 1.0 because the current leader of that is Mr. Larry Larson with the 690 and I know that 1.0 isn't in the mountains so it would be a little different but I'm telling you 
to drop from a 690 all time average low average ET to something in the 640s or even if he lays back and runs in the 70s like that that would just man I'm telling you with Lutz coming back for sick week I think that kind of we're going to see some resurgence I think there's guys that are wanting to have fun in their cars and uh, it'd be awesome to see Larry Larson back as well so yeah who knows who knows I'm I'm hoping so if you want to see Brian Goldstone at 1.0 definitely let him know I know he's a member of the Rocky Mountain Race Weekers Facebook group, so we need to get him in there. So, anyways, um, yeah, six summer, hot rod drag week for sure. I mean, could he lock it up with those three? I don't know. I don't know. The new point structure, it may go down to the wire again. It probably will, knowing the whole system. And if you if you haven't found it yet, dragdriverpeat.com slash world champion. You can find all the rules and point structure and all that kind of stuff there as well. Yeah, and the benefit of him getting into these events early, I shouldn't say early, but getting more events in early is if something does go wrong, he's still got yeah. a few more events later in the year to to get some more points. Well, that's right. And like 2023, he actually um, DNF'd at Sick Week. So he had to do, <clears throat> you know, he had to do Southeast Street and to even be a contender. And yeah. that's the last event of the season. So you don't want to go down to like the wire because they had to fix the car if they were going to win. So as they're sleeping in that car for the hour they slept on night one, they had to get up and fix it the next morning. They couldn't. Right. Oh, well, we'll hit the next one. They couldn't do that. So pretty awesome. All right. Well, let's jump in. Lead us into the uh, to the Howard's Cams community segment. You know, Howard's Cams. The official valve train of Drag Driver Pete. Love Luke B and the team over there. But they've stepped up from the news and are now a show segment sponsor, which is so fun because now we can spend a little more time on it because we're not trying to cram everything into an hour. Go, go ahead and tell us what kind of what we're talking about here. Yeah, so our, our buddy Luke B over at Howard's Cam uh, discussing valve train options for the car. And uh, 1320 video did a street car with Brett. So... What's your vote here? Is Bailey running for 599 after driving his car a thousand miles on Drag Week 19? Is he the baddest street car in the USA? That's the uh, that's the question, right? Because or, in, in my opinion, yes. I mean, like quickest and fastest street car in the USA is what 1320 video put on here. Yeah, I mean, B- Bailey's got that right, like because. And, and this kind of leads into the Kyle Williams post that you sent me earlier is because, you know, Kyle Williams says uh, his post base is dang everybody popping off on what a street car is. Personally, I think there's one right answer. It's you have to have completed a drag and drive period, simple period. Yeah. I, I kind of agree with him. You know, even if it was a regional event and you went out and laid down some numbers, but yeah. to have a car that's titled, eh, okay. Cool. That works. Insured. Yep. Drive it on the street. Okay. Can I, can I sit in a drive through? Can I cruise it anywhere? And can, could you buy fuel for any of that stuff uh, from any gas station? That would be the question. Yeah. But we got a couple people here saying, you know, Brett, Brett's the goat 28s. Brett, Brett's car is dominated. Yep. So. Yeah, I, I think Brett's car in this group of cars, Brett's car has definitely, in my opinion, is the car to beat, especially for the season, as we move into like some of the drag and drive stuff and, and all the world cup finals and all the Texas 2k and all that, like, I mean, five liter coyote set up two seventy fives and goes on to just six thirties. I mean, that what's funny is their average was a hundredth slower than their best all out pass going into sick week. Right. It's crazy. And yeah, uh, Brett here saying that car just absolutely works. Or Brett Hubert. Yes, it, it does. It's really amazing. There were several comments in the, the 1320 video post talking about how well that car works. One and done passes during Dragon Drives. You know, it goes out and just, I mean, kicks puppies at Texas 2K. You know what I mean? Where, right. He's wearing his green shoes at the end of the weekend for sure. Um and, you know, we have an affinity for for drag and drive stuff when we're thinking over here, but it's really cool that 1320 video is talking that highly of it compared to some of these other cars. I mean, some of those other cars make two and three and thirty five hundred horsepower, you know. Right. So but it, like you said, it all comes down to, you know, can it sit in the drive through and can it make the miles and yeah. 
you know, I had a conversation with a guy at work today and I said, you know, for us, all it's got to do is burnouts and ice cream, you know, go get yep. ice cream and do burnouts. But when you yep. start car- talking, you know, these high horsepower cars, it's like, you know, it's got to, it's got to be able to last. It's the drive is harder than the race. Oh yeah, for sure. And I think that's what a lot of people are going to start realizing as they attend these events is the racing is the easy part. I mean, Brett said that the other day about their 2019 drag week trip was that the, the racing is the easy part. It's all the other stuff that comes along. Yeah. Uh, what's Derek saying here? Uh, he's just saying Brett's car is impressive, has the radial tire record for single pass and average. Uh, Tom's 2.0 has quickest pass at 599-250 and a 629 average. And Lutz has the quickest overall average at 619. Yep. Yeah. And obviously Derek Putnam is the man with uh, he's the voice of sick events, which is awesome and uh, a, a great resource for all that kind of stuff. Let's talk about something that's a little bit sad. Um, not that I've ever used them, but um, the Hilborn foul injection that is going away. Sadly, uh, Holly has decided to discontinue that brand within their uh, community. And so obviously Hilborn is a big part of Andy Starr's life. So he was when I saw that news, I immediately messaged him and was like, man, what does this mean? Essentially asking, you know, are, are there going to be people that do this? Are you still going to be able to tune? And of course, Andy being the the awesome guy he is, uh, he said, I'm still extremely passionate about the Hilborn brand. And I will not only be supporting that product, but have Hilborn big block and uh, big block Chevrolet inventory in stock. He can tune it and, and guys, this is what he cut his teeth on was Hilburn injection. So this is how he gets there um, as far as like star performance and tuning. It's really Andy's knowledge. He's been on the show before. He's so smart. It's hard for him to hang out with me. I can only imagine him trying to dump stuff down enough. But uh, he said, just because Holly's closed the doors on Hilborn doesn't mean that it's going to be in the dark because man, there's really nothing cooler than this look right here. Yeah, like, I agree. Oh, the Hilburn injection just looks so cool. So you got Andy Starr, you got Josh Norris who runs it in the red uh, Chevy two. It just looks amazing. Uh, Andy also said Holly's acquisition of the Hilborn fuel injection brand at the last hour allowed the legacy of this great company to continue as Holly continues to reinvent itself. Specialty products such as Hilborn become less viable and sustainable. I consider Holly's time at the helm more of a place setting for when an organization that can commit the resources needed to take full advantage of the Hillborn legacy materializes. So he, he does say that, uh, he said, make no mistake, the people at Holly are extremely passionate about the high performance automotive aftermarket. And there are many things that affect a decision at this level. We may never know what truly transpired, but I hold no ill will towards Holly. And I hope that others will not pass judgment. So again, Andy Starr being being the the man and the politician that he is is it's it's amazing. I love love having that dude as a friend and not that he's a bicycle guy but uh especially a vintage BMX guy but he carries one on the back of the car trailer so you got to give him that. There you go. Yeah. How we hear how we hear saying Doug Cook might be interested. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That would be awesome and it would be in good hands with Doug for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about the circuit I ran the route the other day, driving part of it, because we made a mistake last year, and one of the roads we took everybody on was trash. So (laughs) we're not making that mistake again this year. I will be driving every mile that we're going to drive. I'm going to drive it beforehand. So I went ahead and grabbed some pictures. If you're watching the YouTube channel, you also saw some shorts and some reels on Instagram and things like that of some of the stuff that I hit, but I also grabbed a couple pictures while I was doing that. So the route from Mocan to Gearhead Curios in Galena, Kansas is a little boring, but it really does provide an opportunity to get, there's some good shoulders, there's some good driveways, and it's very easy. There's only two or three stop signs that we'll have to stop at, and there should be very little traffic on a Friday midday. So if you're working to uh, make your passes and get on the road, this will be a great spot for you to kind of test that roadworthiness of your car from the track to Galena is only about 30 miles, I think, by the route we're taking. So, again, two-lane backcountry roads. This is going to be a lot of fun. Once we get to Gearhead Curios, this is literally right along the 
this big boy is at Gearhead Curios. The Galena City Jail is right on the other side of the this other building that's right next to it. So Galena, Kansas is essentially, it's one of the coolest little downtowns. It's old school. Yes, it feel. Is. It's got cars on the route at the end of the road, which is like a, like a, um, and homage to cars the movie so it's got tomater and uh the uh, sheriff and all this kind of stuff down there so we're really going to have a lot of fun right there in galena but i want to ask that you kind of jump in there grab grab something of at gearhead curios he's got a lot of really neat items that are within that he actually curates those all himself so he's finding that stuff to resell and then there's a wall of dollar bills that you can write where you're from and all that so please please do that but at Gearhead, there's not a ton of parking. We can park along the street, obviously, but let's work our way to like getting to Boots Court faster, right? So let's not spend a couple hours at Gearhead because I think we're going to really cause a traffic jam in downtown <laughs> Galena, Kansas. And I think uh, once you hit once you hit that checkpoint, I feel like most people that weren't there last year might cruise down and see the car stuff, which will then kind of maybe eliminate some of that that traffic jam if there is. And that's where all the burnouts were done last year. <laughs> then, so I'll leave Galena. You cruise from, that's in the edge of Kansas. You cruise over into Missouri. And this is literally probably one of the first things you're going to come by. I have no idea what this car is, dude. I don't even know what it started as. Yeah. The front wheels are a wide five VW look. But I don't, but like that, that window that's over the driven hat there is literally the driver's seat. Oh, really? Yeah, that's not the back. That's the driver's seat. So I don't oh, know what this thing is. So, of course, it was Sunday, and it was like 10 o'clock in the morning, so nobody was out and about. This is in front of a junkyard, but I, it blew me away. I was like, okay, I don't know what to think here, but some really neat stuff. So the trip from Gearhead Curios to the Boots Court Motel is 25 miles and took me 90 minutes. Because you stopped at so many things along the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I stopped here. I actually had to turn around here. I, I really thought, man, I should not, I should not go back and look at that. And I just dude whipped a big U-turn right in the say, room. I was going to say, you sent me a picture and I was like, uh, what is that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This isn't even the weirdest side of that thing either. And so then coming through um, a little town, I can't remember the name of this town, but th this is literally the road there that you see in front of that building is route 66. And this is just in the yard. This is just in the yard. So this old truck, whatever this was, international or Jeep or something like that, this big mural is across the street on the side of a building. Oh, I went too far. But there's like five cars right here just around this. It's a regular old house lot. Nobody lives in the house anymore. But this is the kind of stuff you're going to see the entire way. And I literally mm -hmm. drove 50 miles of the route and stopped, I don't know, a lot. <laughs> stopped a lot. So there's also a place called the Super Tam, which is an ice cream stand, which will be open by the time we come through, which oh, cool. has like a 2,500 piece Superman museum. It, it's wow. literally in this small town, downtown. You just drive right through the middle of it. If you are even blinking when you go through this, you're going to miss this ice cream stop unless there's a cool whole bunch of race car friends that are stopped there. So. I really hope that a lot of folks are going to end up stopping there. And then the Boots Court Motel, which is this right here, this is the second oldest motel on Route 66. Which is pretty and wild. It's pretty cool. And I know you can't see my cursor here, but it is the, what looks like a carport is actually a carport. So this is 13 rooms. This was like a big deal back in the day to be cruising across the States. And then you come across this thing at night. This place is going to look really, really cool. But no burnouts in the carports, guys. No burnouts <laughs> in the carports. It's going to be hard. You're going to want to do it, but you cannot. Please don't. So yeah. they go all the way through, actually, which is really cool. And so this sign's been up since like the early 50s, but 13 rooms. It's got, well, basically loop in, but right next to that is also the new visitor center that was an old uh, Sunoco station. Yeah. So you'll have a lot of really great parking options they're bringing in a bunch of asphalt not just for this event but for all of the people that are coming throughout this season of uh, of route 66 so i'm i'm really excited about this stuff this is where i think we can really probably put in 70 or 80 cars comfortably around this whole facility so when i say don't spend a ton of time at gearhead 
it's it's because I want you to spend more a little more time here because I think we can really congregate here and not interrupt the flow of everything and get a lot of folks in trouble. The way Jeremy talked about who's the manager of this facility and also runs a visitor center next door, they're eat up with it, dude. Like they they live and breathe Route 66. So everything they do is how can they keep that vibe going? So it's not they're not modernizing a lot of stuff. So the the visitor center next door is really one of the coolest spots. It's got, it's an old service station. So it has that feel when you look at it, but like all the windows are new, you can tell it's been updated and remodeled. Mm -hmm. Then they have a ton of really cool merch inside and all that. So I'm hoping again that we can 70 or 80 cars can comfortably fit here. We can hang out. We can all talk. I'm going to have somebody run up some ice cream and drinks and stuff ahead of time. So we can all kind of just chill here for just a little bit. Maybe let me uh, catch up after you know we close the track down at five yeah that uh, should be fun oh man that's it's going to be awesome well guys before we bring on our first guest mr j rods garage mr jared holt i want to say thank you so much for being here i want to say thank you for everything that everybody does for us man this it really truly does help keep us going when it's 1 a.m and we want to go to bed two hours ago it definitely makes it better because you are our race car friend and you're here let's say thank you to our sponsors summit racing molly motorsports driven racing oils car chains howard's cams performer built transmissions sweet patina and racing junk guys we couldn't do it without them either so thank you to everybody that is a part of this crazy thing we call uh, drag driver pete yep and then we're going to do our uh, molly ad read here so attention high performance enthusiasts and sportsman class racers meet the molly motorsports power pack kit your ultimate solution for power packed performance crafted with precision from top quality alloys or pistons offer tighter clearances and increased resistance tailored for various engine families from small block chevy to volkswagen and audi we've got you covered what sets us apart forged pistons graphol coating and phosphate treatment for peak performance and durability elevate your ride with molly motorsports where performance meets precision. Unleash the power within. Visit mollymotorsports.com for more details. Again, Molly is spelled M-A-H-L-E. Awesome. All right. Well, Mr. Jared, if you're ready for your time on the, the hot seat here, man, we are, we're excited to have you. We're going to bring him on. Guys, if you don't know, Jared Holt is one of the coolest dudes you'll ever meet. Uh, you're one of my favorite people in the entire car community, but then also you run King of the Open Road, which is one of the funnest events that is out there. It's a, a drag and drive. It's a learning experience, I would say. That's uh, We're going to talk about a little bit of that. And then you have a, an interesting thought on all of how to bring all this together, like a heavyweight class. You have high roller class. You have, uh, anyways, roll racing, all kinds of, I'll let you tell it. Dude, introduce yourself and tell everybody where they can find you. Yeah. Um, for those that don't know, I go by J-Rod. Uh, you can find me at J-Rod underscore OKC on Instagram, uh, J-Rod's Garage on Facebook, and J-Rod's Garage on YouTube. Uh, we started King of the Open Road in the midst of uh, COVID 2020. And uh, it was a really one-day event, super small deal. Um, it was an actual street racing event. We rented a road in Hinton, Oklahoma. And um, I had done Rocky Mountain Race Week the year before. And it inspired me to uh, begin doing actual full-blown events at our local track. And here we are going into our 2024 season, and we did three states, three events last year um, that were hugely successful. Um, yes. Arizona and Texas were obviously a little bit different market than my home here in the 405. So those markets weren't as large a car count, but anytime you can introduce new people to drag and drive, to me, it's a victory. Yeah. So yeah. You know, those were super fun events, and here we are. A few months out, April 26th to 28th is the next King of the Open Road right here in the 405 Thunder Valley. And uh, I think it's going to be our biggest, best one yet um, for a lot of yeah. different reasons. Um, but I'm really excited to see um, this event grow. I think this year we're going to maybe scale it back. We felt like three events and still holding full-time jobs um, was tough to do. Um, you know, Javier, my partner that owns that racing channel, um, you know, he's – so his plate's full, my plate's full. So, you know, it hasn't been publicly announced, but what we're doing is we're going to do a King of the Open Road in April and likely a fall event or drag race. But mm -hmm. somewhere in the middle of that, we're going to do a King of the Open Road off-road edition. Um, oh, there's wow. nothing, nothing like that in the off-road community. Um, I've been off-roading for as long as I've been drag racing. Obviously, it's got put on the back burner as I progress in drag racing. And, you know, the last 
I guess two years ago, we did the street outlaw stuff and all that. So I just bought an FJ cruiser and I really been getting back into it. And I thought, why isn't there anything like this for off-road? And so here we are. I've already got it pretty much locked down. We're doing three off-road parks over three days. And the great thing with off-road is you don't have to worry about weather. You don't have to worry yeah. about insurance. You don't have to worry about track rental. Like it's the yeah. wild. Land. I mean, you, it's so cool. And being in Oklahoma, we're so blessed to have so many off-road parks. Um, so we're going to do that. And I'm really excited to see the Jeep community and the Toyota off-road community. And here in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. side-by-sides are street legal. I think it's going to be really big. What we're going to do with that is we're going to do three, three off-road parks in three days. Um, they're all about 150 miles apart, but we're not going to take any uh, public highways. It's going to be all back yeah. road, dirt road stuff. And there's going to be three different trails um, for different um, categories. There's going to be a novice trail, like a stock Jeep. There's going to be something mm -hmm. like an intermediate, like 33s and maybe a rear locker. And then there's going to be some pretty hardcore shit. So it's going to be like 35s, 37s, locker. But you got to keep in mind, you got to complete these trails and still drive to the next off-road park. And so, <laughs> you know, like with uh, Coder, we do the tokens. That's kind of our thing, right? We do these tokens. Yep. Well, we're going to do a t an individual token for each individual park for each trail. So if you get like, you know, a green trail or whatever we call it, you're going to get all three. You'll get a prize at the end if you complete it. You know, we'll probably give you one of the crowns. You'll get to sit in this throne right here behind me, get to take some pictures. You know, without a drag race, without some kind of a competition, it's going to be pretty hard to give cash out. But we're going to figure mm -hmm. something out. Like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to happen. It's looking like it's going to be September. And I feel like a lot of the drag race guys have offered machines, you know, whether it's yep. a stock, you know, like a Rubicon on 35s or whatever it may be. So it's going to give us an avenue to go play in an off-road and man, just think of the content that's going to be able to, you know, provide Dude. all the, you know, yeah. water crossings and rock. <laughs> so like we got to come up with a cool name for it. Um, but I wanted to get ahead of this before someone else did it. Right. We want to be the first. Yep. Um, there's something called the ultimate challenge that motor trend does. That's kind of similar, but they're really, really hardcore rigs and much yeah. like the open road drag race. I'm not off after the outlaw cars. I'm after the guy that runs 10s, 11s and 12s, maybe nines. You know, I'm after the average Joe car guy, right? There's way more of us than there are Tom Bailey's and Jeff Lutz and Brett LaSalle. Yep. And I just feel like that's a bigger demographic. And, you know, just like with King of the Open Road, it'll introduce people into this. And I guarantee you, people that have off-road vehicles, they probably got race cars, too. So it's oh, yeah. for people to the, to the movement. That's, that's really awesome. cool. Yeah, I, I like I like where your head is at. And again, dude, you do a great job of bringing an entire community together. If you guys aren't on the Cruise in Oklahoma page, you need to do that. That's a that's what almost 20,000 people strong yeah. in there. 21 now and you know yep. we sat in COVID as well and we did a cruise every month for 36 months so for three years mm -hmm. and this year we're going to dial it back because it just got I feel like it got stagnant for the community they expected a cruise every month and the numbers kind of dwindled we got down to maybe 100 150 cars where when it was like a new hip thing we were seeing three to 500 cars yeah, and wow. so you know we're going to dial it back this year we're going to do like six events we're going to start the first one in April, which is our King of the Open Road Cruise, which is where King mm -hmm. of the Open Road started with Cruise in Oklahoma. Um, and just give the people something to look forward to rather than expect. So that's what we're going to do with Cruise yeah. in Oklahoma. No, oh, I dig it. Well, dude, let's talk about King of the Open Road April. Uh, obviously, yep. Oklahoma City, like you said a minute ago. I want to talk about one of the classes that is uh, my favorite and definitely a favorite of Jack Crawford's, the heavyweight class, the uh, LTD Yacht One. So how great did it make you feel to see Sick Week kind of adopting like a heavyweight class? You yeah. Know, they they wanted that. some of those heavier cars out. I saw that, you know, I wanted to do sick week this year. just wasn't in the cards. Um, obviously, yep. my car stays in Florida at Real Street. So it was going to be super easy. Brett LaSalle obviously works on it. You know, when he was at Real Street, just recently moved mm -hmm. over to Motor Works. Um, so it just didn't happen. But, yeah, when I saw that, I was like, you know, that's that's pretty cool, right? Because we were like the yep. first drive to, you know, integrate a heavyweight class. And we're also the first mm -hmm. Dragon Drive to do roll racing. So I'm kind of anxious to if the roll racing mi uh, migrates into some of the bigger week long events, because I really think it should. Um, it's a, another demographic of racer that the Lambo guys, the R8 guys, the stick shift ZR1, you know, there's a lot of cars out there that those guys are mm -hmm. just as passionate as we are about drag racing, but they don't have, I wouldn't call it the skill set. Their car just isn't set up to do it from yep. a dead stop. So, yep. um, it's the roll racing has been really popular at our event. And a lot of the guys do both. They'll do the roll yeah. racing, 
kick their car down to get some test passes and then they can dial it in for the drag racing. So it's pretty cool. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Well, where, where are you stopping for the route stop this year? Yeah. So our route this year um, is pretty cool. Uh, this yep. year we're doing the opposite side of the state, we're going East and it's <clears throat> right about the same distance. It's 291 miles. I actually drove some of the route today and um, <clears throat> we're going through rural Oklahoma, like really rural Oklahoma, no gas stations out there. So people are going to have to be mindful of that with bringing fuel and stuff like that. But the stop is something that I pride myself in. And I feel like I try to do the best I can for the racer to provide them a, a memorable experience. Right. So like every time mm -hmm. we do this, I try to inject a ton of history with our maps and our tokens and all that. Well, this one, I feel like we leveled up. Um, yep. It was something and an idea that I'd been wanting to do with Cruz in Oklahoma just never made it happen. But in Sepulpa, Oklahoma, which sets right on historic Route 66, there's a historic theater there called the Teepee. It's a drive-in theater that a philanthropist that's from Tulsa that actually lives in California now that owns this big makeup line. I don't, they didn't tell me what they own, but they got money. And so they're putting a lot of money in Sepulpa. So they have this really cool restaurant in downtown Sepulpa that's two stories it's, it's really hard to explain how intricate the woodworking is, and it's just a really cool place. Well, they also own that theater. So what we're doing is we're actually renting that theater, and we're going to put 300 Dragon Drive cars in a drive-in theater at sunset, and we're watching American Graffiti on Route 66. So Dude, that's how awesome. cool is that? Yeah, I think that will be a memorable deal because, you know, as we go further in time, people lose sight of a drive-in theater, you know, route 66. Mm -hmm. well, I can't, I've taken my kids, but a lot of guys in the thirties like me, they've probably never been their self. You know, that was our yep. parent generation and our parents' parents' generation more. So yep. for those places like that to still be open and still be, you know, thriving, I think it's really cool. And then American graffiti on route 66 with dragon drive cars. I mean, shit. Yep. I mean, that's, that's a cool deal. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. I agree completely. I was just going to say, you talked about it being in, in rural local Oklahoma. Um, uh -huh. What's what's some of the stuff that people can expect to see along those routes? Is there anything yeah. in, oh, yeah. interesting and in sights? Oh, yeah. yeah. Of course there is. I'm a history freak, and I'm a born and bred Okie, and I I know a lot of the stakes. I've lived. We moved a lot as a kid. For me, with my dad being in the oil and gas field, we moved a ton. So I know a lot of these little back roads, which helps me with these routes. But, yeah, so – you know, one historic town that we'll be driving through is a town called Sasakwa. Sasakwa is like a town of like 600 people. It's a Native American town. There's a lot of Native American history there. Um, you know, then we're going to go into a town called Wawoka. There's known for the Wawoka switch. It was a train thing back in the day. And then as we progress east from there, we're going to go into Sapalpa. Sapalpa is actually the county seat of Creek County. Um, there's a ton of history there. And I mean a ton. There's actually a Route 66 museum there right down the street from the theater that actually has the tallest gas pump in the world. It's like a 45 foot replica of an old glass globe gas pump that's right on Route 66. And that's they've got cool. they got 27 cars in there, tons of Route 66 history. It was actually an old uh, National Guard armory that a guy had bought and turned into a museum. It's, it's a really neat deal. And as you progress oh, cool. back west from Sepulpa down Route 66, I mean, you've got the historic Rock Cafe, which is in Stroud, Oklahoma. I heard you guys talking about the Cars deal earlier. Well, a lot of people mm -hmm. don't realize the Rock Cafe in Stroud is where Sally, the, the movie character from that movie, was based around. Don Welch, the lady that owns that. Because I actually grew up in that cafe working as a kid. So did my mom. Mm -hmm. And I was there in 1997 when they came to uh, actually scout out the movie Cars. The movie Monsters, Inc. and The Bug's Life, it just came out. And I actually got a signed t-shirt from the director. So that part has a ton of cars history plus it's a historic big historic landmark around 66 awesome Stroud. there's the skyliner motel which had been around since the, i think the early 20s super neat deal it's got the old led or uh, neon sign and as you just continue to progress west you've got towns like um, arcadia oklahoma which is very historic i saw you know mike you had posted a picture at uh, pops not long ago on your facebook mm -hmm. uh, yep. big glass you know, so that is going to be a kind of a weird deal. I'm going to, the main route on it is actually going to turn south before you get to Pops because I don't like to take people on interstates or through big towns. But I know a lot yeah. of people see that. So there's two historic stops there called the Red Barn and Pops, which are both in Arcadia. Um, I'm going to give people the option. Obviously, it's only going to be six miles away. So I'm going to encourage people Gosh. to go. Um, but, you know, a lot with Coder, our rules are laxed. We don't have stringent rules. You can pretty much do what you want as long as you get that token. That token is your race, 
right? Without that token, you can't race. So I hope people get to see all this and really take their time and indulge themselves in the local history. And another thing that we were doing this year is a lot of you, you probably know Jack Wagon Nova that does Rocky Mountain Race Week yep. and all that. He came to Coder, Texas, hit it off with a guy, super amazing guy. Well, he sent me like 12 historic um, drive in movie speakers because I had talked to him about it. So we're having those custom etched with the date and King of the Open Road and all that. And we're actually going to hide, I wouldn't say hide them, we're going to drop them off at different landmarks along the way that aren't necessarily a stop. But if you want to stop in there and see if someone's grabbed it yet, you're more than welcome to because 12. How cool. They're going to get an option. They're going to get an opportunity to have those. And they're like legit 1940 speakers. I mean, they're not, they're, they're very cool. So that's just some of the things we're doing in the King of the Open Road this year. So we really hope to set the bar up this year and make it that much more uh, of an experience. Cause let's be real. People can go drag race anywhere, any weekend, mm -hmm. at any place. So to me, it's the cruise, it's that experience. It's making the memories with your family, having a cold beer and a steak and all those things is what makes King of the Open Road to me a little bit different than most because I do spend so much time making those maps and really indulging in the local history. Yep. Yeah, well, and it's awesome. I, I, I do want to tell you, be that time that I spent with you in the car and just the the level of thought that you gave to that I, is is over the top, has made my event and my thought process even better. And that's, I mean, 100% accredited to you because it really, truly is amazing what you've done with not only just the brand, but also what you do and provide for the folks too. It's, it was really, it was really a fun experience to getting, get to ride with you as we pulled into a town. It was like, you would make a phone call and then there'd be like a, a police officer block the street. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I think at one point we had like 80 or 90 cars behind us and everybody had a green light, whether it was green or not, you know, so it was, oh. it was pretty that's the cool thing with Oklahoma, man. You know, a lot of people don't realize this. There's more people in the DFW Metroplex than our entire state. So, like, it's just a big town in this state. And being from yeah. here my whole life and being, you know, in the cars and all that with cruising Oklahoma, I've made so many relationships with these local municipalities. So they're literally just a phone call away. And they're some of the best people I know. And so they're more than willing to set up a roadblock or use a fire truck. And then, you know, you let these towns know. When's the last time a town's seen 300 race cars come through it? You know, Lambos yeah. and Ferraris and old muscle cars and, you know, all that stuff. So it becomes kind of like a rolling parade through these small towns. And those people remember that stuff. And then what's cool about it is you never know what those kids are watching. You may be inspiring the next generation when you drive your race car through. So what are some of the racers we uh, need to watch out for for your upcoming uh, event well, in April? I've been uh, I've been chatting with Brett about coming. Um, obviously, me and Brett are pretty tight. I don't know if it's going to work now that he just started at Motion. Um, I know Mr. Frost said he's going to come. Um, we don't have an outlaw class this year. I took that class away because it was so small. So I think he's going to bring one of June's cars and come cruise around with us cool. and hang out. Um, you know, Sean and Betty, my buddy with the Subaru, Misfire Motorsports that raced on my street outlaw team, that car is mm -hmm. just right at the verge of busting into the eights. They are put a new turbo on it. They're going after eights. Um, you know, the Jack Wagon Nova is going to be there. You know, I can't think of them all of them off the top of my head. I know we're going to have uh, 700 horsepower side by side doing this. They're going to be driving that thing down. I mean, that thing should go mid to low nines. Um, you yeah. know, Motor Class, Dustin Moody, Moody's Performance, who sponsors our event. You know, he'll be coming back and racing his turbo bike and, you know, justified performance out of Arkansas. Um, they bring some amazing cars out zr1s and motorcycles and you know the list could go on and on a lot of my demographic of racers they race texas 2k and that's the first big race right um for us in the year so after texas 2k which is like march 10th i'm sure as long as their cars live and they're not too banged up <laughs> we're a flood of entries after that um and what's needed is after that obviously i go into racing my other cars um, after we get done promoting the event, but I plan on doing Rocky Mountain Race Week 2.0 this year. Um, I haven't been yes. back to race since uh, I think 2019. Um, but yeah, me and Jay from Real Street Performance, um, kind of my tuner, one of my best friends. Um, mm -hmm. He's going to come back here and hop in the car, and we're going to do you know guy stuff. We're going to drive around Texas, and <laughs> all those tracks that Matt picked. I've never been to, so except yep. for Texas. So I'm really looking forward to that trip. Um, we're going to get the super lined out and see if we can't you know. I know we're probably running that 750 class, but you know, we went 721 at 194 at World Cup with no nitrous. So we wow. know if we that car, it'll probably go 70 at 200. I don't know if we want to push it that hard or you got to drive it a thousand miles because that car's still 3,500 pounds, power windows, power locks, headlights, the whole bit. 
Um, so it's, it's a lot of stress for 180 cubic inches. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's dude. I love that car and love what you guys have done with it for sure. Well, uh, so l- what are some other cars that you got in the, in the stable in the fleet there behind you? Cause, uh, I, I see there's some stacks of stuff back there. Oh, I mean, yeah, I got, yeah, I kind of, I got the throne. So I figured I'd set it up. So we just picked up that O3 <laughs> Cobra um, that we just uploaded to our YouTube channel that, man, I didn't think a Mustang of all things would really do well on my channel, but it's got about a hundred thousand views on that video it's picked me up like five thousand subscribers people are eating that up so it's a zinc yellow o3 yep. cover that's kind of a barn find and um, we're doing a full manly rotating assembly in it a big you know kenny bell or a whipple kind of old school build uh, i've got my sti in there i just blew my evo up last weekend that was yeah, fun. i saw uh, that yeah my integra type r is in there my dodge stealth a couple 3000 gts my o2 ss 35th anniversary camaro uh my 30th anniversary ws6 uh, a couple sport bikes and uh, my Viper. And uh, then the two yep. Super away, my 300ZX is away, my RX-7's away. They're all getting upgrades. So you know how it is. It's just never ending. Yep. That's awesome, man. Well, hey, I want to say thank you for coming on tonight. Dude, was, I, I appreciate you giving us some insight on the the event, obviously. But, dude, like, I mean, I think that's breaking news about the off-road deal. And I'm not really an off-road guy, but uh, I'm, I'm really pumped about that event. Yeah, the <laughs> off-road stuff, I think, is – it's going to give those off-road people the same experience and enjoyment that we get out of these events. And man, like those people, they're, they're in the same motorsports as we do. We just, they just do it different, right? They like to crawl big rocks and go through mud and climb up steep inclines. And to me, that's just as fun as going 200 miles an hour in a car. So I thought to myself, I was like, man, we have this platform to use with TRC Mm -hmm. having, you know, a 1.6 million subscriber YouTube channel. And let's get these people some positive light on them. And let's go off-roading and let's, you know, yeah. hit the dirt roads, like the real back roads, single lane. <laughs> That's road, right. Like, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I don't know. I think it'll be cool. And a lot of those people will camp. They'll, they're overland people, right? So they'll have tents yeah. on the road. They will literally, they'll do their trail, they'll wheel. And then obviously, you know, Kicker is one of my biggest sponsors and with sponsors and everything we do. Kicker is going to give us some really cool outdoor rugged speakers that we're going to hide around the off-road parks. So once you get through doing your trail, you can go try to find those and be kind of like a treasure hunt. So it'll be something that's really family friendly. You bring your dog, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. I'm real excited about it. Yep. That's awesome. Man. Well, where can people watch you? I think you said J rod garage a yeah. few times, but where, where all are you at? YouTube. Um, you know, I think we'll probably hit 20,000 subscribers tomorrow. We've really been busting our butt the last couple of weeks on that deal. Um, J rod underscore OKC on Instagram and then J rod garage on Facebook. Um, and then King of the open road has an Instagram as well as a Facebook page. Uh, K O T O R is our acronym. A lot of people shorten it up to that. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to message me. I'd love to get any kind of racers that have never experienced King of the open road. that are looking for that next adventure. Cause I promise you it will be an adventure. Oh yeah. I- anything with using an adventure, dude, it's, it's going to be fun. I intend to drive over that Friday and uh, hang out with you guys. I don't know if I can get there that morning. Cause you guys leave at like 7 AM for your drive. No, we won't leave, but, we uh, won't leave that because sunset mm. movie theater, we can't watch the movie before the sun sets. So we will well, not. That's a great point. Yeah. We won't be leaving that early. Um, it'll be a long day that day, but, you know, 300 miles and we have to get to Sepulpa about six o'clock in the evening. So, mm. um, how many people actually stick around and watch the whole movie which i don't care if they do or not but i want those people to pack in there and experience that many race cars watching that movie on route 66 i think once we get them in there we can get their token they're free to leave so uh it'll, it'll be pretty cool but yeah it will not be an early cruise it'll be a later in the afternoon cruise well that'll think, work out that'll work out perfect for me <laughs> i just think the the photo opportunities for that are going to be incredible too yeah i imagine kinda... some drones will probably be up there yep. getting some overhead shots too so me being in sales, that's kind of how I sold that place on this ideal. <laughs> I was like, man, what kind of marketing better would it be to have 300 cool ass cars with a line of people coming out and you get those pictures and, and those are your proprietary, you know, property. That's what I told them. You guys can use those for marketing because not only is King of the Open Road going on in that day, that's also our cruising Oklahoma event for April. It kicks our year off. So we're going to have a hundred cruising Oklahoma cars plus 200, 300 race cars. I mean, we very could have five to 600 cars on this cruise. Man, wow. that's, it, it, it truly is one of the coolest events that's out there. All right, dude. Thank you again so much. We, we appreciate you guys for, for everything you do for the sport. And uh, we'll see you soon. Awesome, brother. Thank you for having me. Yep, yeah, man. Thanks. Yep. All right, bye-bye.
listen, I'm telling you right now that that dude is one of my favorite people in in all of Dragon Drive and all of the car community. He really, truly, deeply cares about the entire sport, and it's it's really apparent with when you attend an event like like yeah. King of the Road. And a lot of the stuff we do is modeled after what. I see him do, or, I mean, I'm telling you, riding in that car that day changed the whole way everything worked. Dude, what a fun show tonight, man. It's It's been a great show. We had two two announcements that you hear here first, nowhere yeah. else. Uh, the off-road kind of drag and drive yep. event is going to be pretty sweet, too. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, awesome show tonight. Yeah, yeah, we had a good time, guys. Again, want to say thank you so much to everybody. Want to thank our sponsors. Thank you for being our race car friends. Thank you so much for all the the support you guys have given us. Uh, Summit Racing, Molly Motorsports, Driven Racing Oil, Car Chains, Howard's Cams, Performa Bill, Sweet Patina, and Racing Junk, guys. We can't do it without everybody. Just want to say thanks again. <laughs> Like this show? Want more? Then head to WatchPTTV.com, the new 100% free PowerTube TV streaming network. Home of the best classic and new motorsports racing and build shows on the web.